Today I have a pedigree piece of equipment to service. This is a Macintosh MVP 861. This is an SA CD and DVD player that was brought in for service and it's not functioning correctly. So it's going to be a fun one. We'll see how well this American built uh, CD player really is. Check it out. I have a Macintosh DVD CD player and the complaint on this is it stops. So let's see what it's doing. So let's let it play and see if it stops. It's supposed to stop playing after a few minutes. So let's uh, let it go and see what happens. Well this thing's been running for more than five minutes. In fact, it's uh, more than halfway through the disc now. It hasn't skipped the beat, but I figured I would pull the top off this thing to let you guys have a peek inside a Macintosh DVD Super Audio CD CD player. Here's the back of this one. You can see it's got RS-232 connector for interfacing, coaxial and optical outputs, balanced analog outputs, unbalanced two-channel output, then for your 5.1 channel it's got your front left and right, surround left and right, center and uh, subwoofer. For video out it's got S-video, composite video and component. And remember this is just a DVD player. It is not a Blu-ray player, so it's not high definition. It's just a standard definition DVD player. But it also plays Super Audio CD and regular conventional CDs. I love all the discrete parts on this thing. Right? All through hole. Very well constructed for the digital board here. It's got a few surface mount chips in here. Like what they've done to the power supply all the cabling from the transformer has been wrapped these are the AC wires coming out of the transformer they're all wrapped and shielded and grounded just to eliminate any influence because when you're buying a Macintosh well you're paying for the name too and people that pay the kind of money that these things sell for expect the very best so this is all wrapped and tie strap down. Anyway, I, there may not be anything wrong with this thing. It may be just fine. Uh, the guy that brought it to me said it plays for five minutes and stops, but it's been playing a lot longer. Notice where you select your power. You can move this connector. 120, 220, and 240 volts, and 100, but there's no connectors for the 100. That would be for Japan, but they haven't put a header on there. They've just put a header for 120, 220, and 240. And that would change the configuration of the wires going to the primary. These are the secondary windings here. It's a toroidal type transformer. And they've even put a coating over all of the uh, capacitors here. Presumably that's to stop any resonance. See, all the capacitors have got this blue, almost feels like a rubberized coating on them. So that must be to stop resonance from vibrations. Uh, just from the, like if you have it playing really loud, this the vibration of music in the air getting in and causing microphonics, causing the capacitors to start to resonate, which could cause, I guess in some situations, microphonics or noise to be introduced. So they've, they've coated all the components all capacitors have been coated with this like a conformal coating I'm sure that's to deaden any vibration that could influence them I think the belt needs to be changed on this because it's not going in properly. That's the only thing I can see. Unless it's not chucking. 
I think that's the problem is it's not chucking it and that's why it's not playing. I think just the problem with this is that the uh, the load belt. See now it's trying to open again because it played the CD through. It played the CD through like three times. That's exactly what it is. It's not chucking the disc properly. The belt is worn out and it's not chucking the disc. Oops. Now it's spinning up. That's what the problem with this one is. It's the belt that's worn. So let's uh, get in there and change the belt. I imagine I probably have one that will work on this unit. And I can take the nose cone off here. So it looks like the CD mechanism is held in place by four screws, but there are a couple ribbon cables in here that may need to come out to uh, release it. Looks like there's four main screws down here that hold the mechanism in place and there's one that's probably buried under this this ribbon cable here. So yeah this could be a challenge. I probably I may have to even remove the board to get at it. I've got this power unplugged now so I can unplug this cable. And also need to remove the connectors for the transformer. And they just unplug. And there should be a couple of screws to hold the. I think this entire back will come off with just a couple screws. So we'll remove those. bunch of screws later to get the bottom off it so that I can disconnect the power connectors from the board so I can lift the board out in order to get at the CD uh, connecting cable to disconnect the connecting cable. Awful lot of work just to get into this thing to change a belt but anyway the unit's apart now I can now undo these connectors that are holding the board in place and then I can put the unit back down you gotta take this whole back and everything off to get at this just so that I can get enough clearance in here so that I can and I can't take this connector through here because it's got this stupid uh, um, like a glue on there so I have to actually disconnect it from below which means I had to take the back off it so I could get my hand in there to disconnect the connector on the other side in order to lift the circuit board out of the way and then once the circuit board's out of the way I can remove this cable this flat cable so that I can get at the screw that holds the mechanism in. I have to take this cable out of the way so I can get to the screw that's underneath there so I can lift the mechanism out so that I can begin to work on changing the belt on this stupid thing. Okay, now that I've got the main board out of the way, 
Oh, that's not even tight. Those screws aren't even finger tight. What the heck? At least that one wasn't. This one's a little tighter. But that first one wasn't even finger tight. It was really loose. Oh, that's why it's on a spring. It's a shock mechanism, shock mount. Same with this one over here. This one will be tight, but this one will be loose. That's so that it can be centered, right? It's just a, it's a like a floating mount so that the the mechanism itself can be centered so that it doesn't hit anything. That's why the long screws. Okay, so now the mechanism should lift out. One more connector. Okay, now the mechanism's out. You see these things sit on springs. Now I can get at this thing to change the stupid belt. What a silly design this one is. I'm going to turn the gear here manually to... Now I can see the belt. It's right there. I wonder if I can get at it without having to take this thing apart anymore. But there's, there's the loading belt right there that I need to change. And I may get lucky. Well, who knows? I may have to take this thing apart even more than it is. I think I gotta probably take the tray out to get at it because there's a gear right here that's underneath it. So, you guys think of my new little my little invention? I just took an old uh, porcelain light socket, zap tied it to the end of a an old table lamp, like a articulating arm lamp, and now I've got an LED light source that I can position where I need it. Cost me nothing. This used to have an incandescent bulb on the end of it at one time, but the, the, the reflector and everything got banged up and damaged, so it got taken apart. I was using it at one point there to hold one of my little microscope units that I'm not using, the old one. So then I figured, you know what? It would work good for a light, so now I've got a, a light that I can move around. Actually, I think I had my fluorescent magnifier on this arm at one time too. It's been repurposed several times over the last couple of years every time becoming more useful. Get the belt out of there. Okay, there's half the belt out now. Can I get it over top of this this gear is what the big question is. Can I get it over here? I might be able to I might be able to slip it over top of this gear. If I lift the gear out of the way. Hopefully it won't break. There. There's the old belt. Now, see if I can go find a new one that's a little bit smaller than this that I can slip back in there and get this thing working. Okay, I've got another belt that's a little bit smaller. Get something finer to push that with.
Okay, now the trick is getting it to the Get it over top of the other pulley. Oops, I'm not all the way around the pulley yet. Now I am. Okay. Now the fun part will be to stretch this around and get it over top of the other pulley. Just like that. No more slipping. Now time to put this thing back together. This is used to adjust the centering of the deck. Once I get everything plugged in to make sure that it's not, to make sure the front doesn't hang up when it opens and closes. So remounting the board and then I got to put the connectors on from the bottom. It's actually well laid out and relatively easy to service this unit. And of course someone with a service manual would know that uh, you got to remove the bottom to get at it, but I don't have a service manual so I kind of have to learn as I go. The circuit board still has to come out though to get at that screw. Anyway, now that the board is mounted again, we'll 
turn the unit up on its side and reconnect the stuff from the bottom. Well, that was going to be fun to connect. There's one connector back here which has to go into a socket on this side and with the board in place it's hard to reach. Might be able to get to it if I pull, remove the back here, remove the bottom or tip the bottom out of the way. Of course that's connected to the power connector which does not have a lot of slack. Move that out of the way. Now I can probably get into the, get my hand in there and hook this other connector up. It's got to go in here. And they don't give you any extra slack, that's for sure. Holy smoke, these connect these uh, these ribbons are exactly the right length. Like there's there's no extra slack. This is the power connector for the, the CD portion that connects down here. And then this connector connects to that. Now I think the back can go on it. The, the back plate can go on it now. And of course for any of you guys that are concerned about the unit being damaged, you do notice that I do have a rag underneath the, the brushed side pieces because this piece belongs to an audio file that uh, is uh, pretty picky about his equipment. Hence why he's got a Macintosh a CD player. I know some people are quick to criticize how I'm rough on equipment. Well, the only equipment I'm really rough on is stuff that I own and stuff that get, I'm getting rid of. You know, I, I know this is probably going to make some people upset, but many of the things you see that I service that, are, that I own, I don't keep them. Once I get them going, I give them away, or, I, or I, if they've got no value, I recycle them. There's, a, there's very few pieces that I actually keep of a lot of the stuff that I fix. When you see me slamming an old VCR down on the counter and criticize me for rough handling an old VCR, well, that VCR is heading to the recycling place five minutes after the video is done, whether it's fixed or not. So, uh, or it's being given away. So, on my own equipment, I really don't care. Uh, on customers' high-end equipment, I take extra care to make sure that it leaves my shop in exactly the same condition that it arrived. Once I get the remainder of these screws in, I'll be able to test it and then put it back together and get it out of Dodge, as they say. Everything's connected now. Just do one last double check to make sure that everything's plugged in. Yeah, everything's plugged in there. The last thing I need to do before applying power is I have to adjust the height of the uh, the deck.
so that it can actually eject the CD, otherwise it'll hit. I have to lower this down and make it level. So we'll do that and see if it will open. Okay, now put the nose piece back on and make sure that it's going to close properly because I think I'm still a little bit too high. So that's what this adjustment is for, is to as this go on. It goes on like this, I believe. This is to make sure I'll just close this without it open, without power on it. That's going to hit. So now I'm going to lower down those screws to make sure that this fits properly. That's why these screws are on springs, so that you can adjust the height so that it'll, it'll fit exactly center. You can actually level this thing off. So it's right in the middle. And open. Close. And play. Once it reads. And there we go. Cool. New belt. That's what the problem with this one was. What a lot of work to change this. But you know what? <laughs> I like the look of this CD player. Man, oh man, this is a nice looking CD player. Love it. Made in USA. And that, boys and girls, is about the best looking CD player I've seen. Well, no, maybe not. My Sony CDP uh, 555 looks pretty damn good inside, too. It's all got copper. But um, this is a very good looking unit. Put that cable back there to hold it in place. Uh, I like this with this dampening that they put on all the parts stop any vibration including on that connector there that's why I had to take the board out I couldn't un I couldn't get this connector to go through this this ferrite bead is actually glued right down to this ribbon cable anyway let's get this thing back together and get it finished up this unit has been playing for a while time to put this unit back together I like the display on this this is a nice machine I'd have one of these in my setup without 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 even thinking twice about it I would have one of these set up maybe I'll offer him a hundred bucks for it you think he'll take a hundred for this thing somehow I think he won't but it would be a nice machine well for the fun of it I figured I would put an mp3 encoded CD in here and this thing plays it you know, the tracks on here I would definitely have one of these things in my collection if I could afford one. I forget how many tracks are on this disc. There's, there's over 100, I'm sure. I don't know how high the display goes. Let's see. Let's see how high this thing goes. But I bet you there's 120 or 130 tracks. No, there's not. Yeah, here we go. 103. Yeah, it's going to go up there. I wonder how many is on here. Well, there's track 106. I guess there's 106 tracks on this disc. Yeah, I'd have one of these players. Can you imagine that? 106 tracks or whatever the disc will hold. Put it in random and then you can just let one disc play off of a CD. That's what I used to do in my car when I had a, a CD player in my car. My new car doesn't have a CD player, unfortunately. I have to put everything on a USB stick, which is fine, or an a SD card. But when I had a CD player in the car that supported MP3, I would just record a bunch of MP3 tracks onto a CD and put it in the car and I'd have uh, hours and hours and hours of music to play back. Anyway, this supports MP3. I'm pretty impressed. Anyway, um, time to put this thing back together and send it on its way.
nice heavy base goes on this unit. I am going to use the power driver, so I'll shut off the camera so that I don't annoy people with the noise that it makes. Well, there it is, back together. Put my MP3 disc back in. We'll test it. Then I'll get a hold of the guy that owns it and let him know it's all ready. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you again in the next one real soon. Bye for now.